Now, I know the reaction to some people whenever you talk about anything that deals with race, ethnicity, the reaction is going to be, oh my god, here we go, woke SJW cuck BS, and all that other type of right-wing fear-mongering BS. And you know it's going to happen. You'll see it clearly in the comments. Not everything is about race. Let, let's say this. What country are you living in? What planet are you living on? What in the flat earth are you talking about? Because you clearly don't understand American history because there is hundreds of years, literally, of everything about this country being about race and those who, that are white versus those who are not white. If you choose to ignore that history from the massive wide-scale enslavement of first the Native Americans to chattel slavery to the ritualistic long-term genocide committed against Native Americans and then even once you had emancipation the hundred years of you know we're gonna take it back and we're gonna put in black laws and then eventually goes into Jim Crow and even afterwards when you talk about the justice system and you talk about the for-profit prison system the police system there's always something with race yes it can get exhausting and frustrating to talk about understandably so but if you're white and it frustrates you imagine if you're not like not only do you have to hear about it and talk about it you got to live it you know what i mean if you can't understand that or you choose not to and you choose to get defensive about it it's not my problem you just choose to be disconnected from reality but this whole thing that went on a couple of days ago with big swole and then tony khan this is interesting first i see what you're doing tony khan you diverted all the attention away from sammy Guevara and ty conti and them posting on whatever it was, Instagram or whatever, their New Year's smooch. We see what you're doing. We see what you're doing. We sniffed it out. And if anybody's going to sniff it out, it's this big old schnoz, that's for damn sure. But obviously, what Big Swole said about AEW and things relating to diversity and then Tony Khan's response certainly kicked up a bit of a shitstorm. There's no question about it. I'm hoping first, before we really get to the heart of the matter, that we can establish some baseline reality here. I've already done that one part. The whole, it's not always about race. In this country, it always has been. What history did you learn? That doesn't make you a bad person for living in a country where that has been the history, but that has been the history. Big Swole is absolutely right that AEW fans don't take criticism well sometimes and don't take criticism of the product well at all. But she's misguided in the sense that that's just the fans. That's not just the fans, Big Swole. That's the wrestlers and the executives up to and especially including Tony Khan. So don't just lay that at the fans' feet. If anything, your biggest offenders are the wrestlers and Tony Khan. They're the most insecure babies out of anybody involved with wrestling. That's the reality. In terms of diversity and equality of opportunities, let's not just hang this on AEW. I know I make my cracks about them being all egg white wrestling, and there are reasons for that. I'll get to that here in a moment. But that's not just an AEW thing. It's also not just a WWE thing. In some ways, it's a societal thing, but to the scope of professional wrestling as a whole, that is absolutely a historical professional wrestling problem. Like You look at WWE now. Roman Reigns being Samoan helps him because Vince is comfortable with Samoans. He's had more exposure to them in, over the years, and he has had more ability to and time and opportunity to trust them, going back to the days of Afa and Sika, and then Yoko Zuna. He was like, I don't really trust the Asian wrestlers, but I'll trust a Samoan that's pretending to be an Asian wrestler. If Roman Reigns was black, he would not get the same level of push. He just wouldn't. Cream rises to the top, my ass. 
It's why for years they always emphasized the Samoan heritage more for The Rock because it was very familiar and comfortable for Vince McMahon. And even though over the years he's certainly given Hispanic and Latin wrestlers some very bad stereotypical gimmicks, he also has had way more comfort level with pushing some of those Hispanic and Latin Mexican stars to the very top of his company. Can go back to the days of his dad when they owned the WWWF and Pedro Morales, who was Puerto Rican, was a multi-year champion for that company. He didn't have that same experience, so it's less about Vince McMahon being a redneck from the trailer park of North Carolina, being just a flat out racist, there have been racist things that company has done. And it's more about the lack of opportunity provided because he's just not as comfortable with them. The point I'm getting at here is the lack of diversity and more so presentation and equality of opportunities is not unique to AEW. We also need to understand that non-white wrestlers are not a monolith. And their experiences are not the same. Stops pointing out, well, Sammy Guevara is a freaking TNT champion. Okay, Sammy Guevara is of Spanish descent. If he didn't know much different, he doesn't look that different from me. And I'm German and like Scandinavian. If anything, I believe he's the same pigment as me, if not slightly whiter. His experience is not going to be the same as somebody like a Scorpio Sky or a Jay Lethal or a Powerhouse Hobbs. It's just not. Okay? So just because you have this good presentation and representation here, that does not go across the board. They are not a monolith, and we got to stop acting them like that. They are. They're just not. And... We have to be able to understand that diversity can be a very broad brush, but diversity is not necessarily just the types of faces and pigments that you see. There is much more to that, okay? Now, as far as what Big Swole said, I, I get where she was going, and I don't think it was the most well-stated point, although it wasn't terrible. I think she was somewhat off the mark. She said, and I quote, Outside of a lack of structure, their biggest issue, which is diversity. I do not beat around the bush when it comes to diversity and my people. There is no representation truly, and when there is, it does not come across in the black community as genuine. Side note, must be a shot at Brandy Rhodes. At all. I don't know why everybody is so afraid to accept it or say it, but it's not a good look. What happens is, you have this wonderful company that treats people like family, but there's nobody that looks like me that is represented at the top and in the room with them. They are not helping to necessarily influence decisions, but to explain why certain slang and certain words shouldn't be said. There is no one else who can explain our culture and experience except for us. And that deals with representation. And representation is important. It absolutely is. But it's kind of a thing of, just because you have a woman in charge of something does not automatically mean that that woman is going to be the best on women's issues. When you talk about business or you talk about politics or anything like that, that's ridiculous. They might be able to better understand, but it doesn't mean that that understanding automatically translates to the proper or best actions. Same thing. You could have a black executive in AEW but totally not looking out for the best interest of black male and female talents. You could have a white face pastier than me. That could be a far stronger champion and a far stronger advocate. So yes, representation is important. I don't mean to dismiss that. But representation alone does not solve everything. It is a step in the right direction. It is an important piece, but it is not the only piece. Because even if you have that larger representation at the top, it doesn't necessarily change some of the other issues. Now that in and of itself wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad. Like I said, I feel like she didn't explain it as well. Like she did go on a little bit to talk about, hey, I turned into WWE as my daughter and versus AEW, nobody looks like me. Nobody looks like my husband, Cedric Alexander. But we turn on WWE, and my daughter's like, there's Biggie and there's Bianca. 
that's not just representation, that is presentation. And I'll touch on that in a moment. But of course, Tony Khan had to respond. And another baseline reality we need to establish here is Tony Khan comes across like a bad mark sometimes. He really does. An insecure, obsessed mark. You cannot get butt hurt and respond to every goddamn criticism that you or your company receives. It is a bad look. And for anybody that is part of the cult of personality of Khan I Stan, that doesn't call this bullshit behavior out, you are complicit and you are equally a part of the problem. Stop encouraging it. Stop adding fuel to the fucking fire. Why in the hell would you want your top executive of your company focusing on BS like responding to every damn critique and criticism? No. That's not what a good business person does. But I digress. Because Tony Khan just can't sometimes shut the fuck up, which sometimes is what he needs to do, honestly, Tony Khan just had to respond, and he went, and I quote, The top two AEW execs are Brown, apparently himself and his wife. Jay Cargill, Anthony Bowens, Max Caster, Dante Martin, Nyla Rose, Isaiah, Mark Hinn, all won on TV this month. The TBS title tournament has been very diverse. I let Swole's contract expire as I felt her wrestling wasn't good enough. Hashtag AEW Rampage Street Fight tonight! Unquote. Couple of things here. Tony Khan. No, you are not white, but your life as brown is not the fucking norm. Give me a break. You being brown is not the same as some of your wrestlers having to grow up black in America especially when you got significant benefits and opportunities presented to you because of your father and your inherited wealth. Your dad is a multi-time billionaire. What a stupid fucking comparison to make. That's ridiculous. Your life journey does not align with that crap. You get chances and opportunities that, frankly, when you look at what you've done with the soccer team in England, when you look at the way and the things that you've done with the Jacksonville Jaguars. You are not good at your job in those spaces. I reserve some judgment on the AEW piece, but the other st shit, you're not good at your job. And if your dad didn't own the team, you would long since have been fucking fired, but you never even got those opportunities to begin with. So to sit there and say that it's not a problem when you talk about diversity because I'm brown and my other top executive is brown is just fucking stupid. Because you didn't even have the life that most white people experience in this country, let alone black or other non-white minorities in this country. That's ridiculous. And the whole tweet really gave off some real, I'm not racist because I have black friends type of vibes. Not a good look. And actually, you having to name specific examples validates the criticism. Because what you're pointing to is, we can't have a problem here because these black wrestlers win. It's not just about wins and losses. It's not just about whether they just get some TV time. It's about presentation, not just representation. And your whole thing about the TBS title tournament, yeah, it's very likely Jade Cargill is going to win in, in the finals, sure. But it's also the second tier belt for the company. And Jade Cargill's undefeated. I agree, still pretty green in the ring, but give me a fucking break here. Whereas you could say if he, she was one of Kenny Omega's favorites and from Japan, she would have got rocket shipped and she would have already had a long women's championship run. You don't believe me? Look at Rio and Akaru Shida. Again, non-white wrestlers are not a monolith. Their experiences are not the fucking same. And we need to stop acting like they are. And as far as the little crack about I let Swole's contract expire as I felt her wrestling wasn't good enough, another kind of baseline reality here. He's not wrong. Like, to be kind, Big Swole needed a lot of work in the ring. She was not ready for prime time from an in-ring standpoint. 
Is she alone or exclusive in that in terms of the current AEW roster? Oh, hell fucking no. She's far from the only one. And not just the ladies either. Absolutely plenty of guys have no business being on primetime TV. But just because it's true and just because you can say it doesn't mean it's something that you should say, Tony. Because you go down this thing where you're bothering to respond to actually a pretty softball criticism there and you're getting all butthurt and emotional and soy boy about it. And then you kind of throw in this extra unnecessary ad hominem argument and attack on Big Swole to try and undercut her and delegitimize her. And basically say that what she's saying is because of sour grapes. And that's the type of shit that's going to wear badly on people. Because now you're minimizing their experience. Instead of sitting there understanding that you might have one mouth but you have two ears so you have twice as much power that comes from listening than fucking opening your diarrhea hole and listening and learning from the experiences of others and taking that and absorbing it and saying, you know what? Maybe I need to listen to this more and I consider it more and I need to take a look at a different perspective. Instead, of course, you do the opposite thing, which is kind of the human nature that so many people are encouraged to do. And your cult of personality certainly encourages you to do that. Because why would they ever question the king of Khan? It's ridiculous. But that was stupid and it was uncalled for, it was unnecessary, and it's not a good look. It doesn't matter if what he said here was accurate or true. And to be clear, it kind of was. The fact is, is that it was a way to undercut what she was saying, and that is part of the problem too. Now, when you talk about purely from a diversity standpoint, AEW's roster, honestly, and I'm going to focus specifically on black wrestlers here, is pretty well in line with American population demographics, for whatever you want that to mean. You know, when you think about identify solely as black, African American, and then, you know, multiracial with some component of black lineage. It's about 16, 17% according to the U.S. Census Bureau. 17% of the male wrestlers, 17% of the female wrestlers in AEW are black. So pretty in line with the population demographics. Now, when I say that, it's saying, okay, from a representation like a mathematical population representation, demographics representation, it's somewhat in line. If that makes anybody uncomfortable saying it should be more, I'm just merely pointing out that mathematically that is pretty in line with the country of the United States as a whole. I'm not saying that it should be that way, I'm just saying that's what it is. But face and color diversity, again, is only one type of diversity and equality and there is way more to that. I think when you talk about a presentation thing, like this is a thing we gotta talk about too, and I've talked about it before, certainly with WWE, and the problem with pushing so many bright white faces is when you are increasingly pushing your product and promoting your product as an athletic sporting endeavor, and you're doing it with primarily white faces, it is going to have a certain stigma attached. You can see, well, you've had some pretty big stars in UFC that have been white, absolutely, and you've also had some pretty big stars that were not white, you know what I mean? But you talk about in a country like America where almost three quarters of the NBA is black, 60% of the NFL is black, meanwhile, you're at 17%. You're doing better than MLB and NHL, but you're only doing a little bit better in terms of population and representation, demographic representation, than two of the least watched sports in this country. It's not exactly something to be beating your chest about. Now, for those that are just going to point out and say, well, all egg white wrestling, and I'm guilty of it sometimes too, and sometimes it's valid, they're gonna point to, well, the lack of the number of champions, and that is one component of it, but it's a little bit unfair for AEW in this respect is that they have only been around a couple of years. So naturally, their sample size is going to be a bit smaller, especially because they tend to skew with longer title reigns. Fair or not, I mean, that's just kind of the reality. But when you look at the numbers, they're pretty damning. One out of the 10 people that have been tag team champions in the company was black, was your first tag team champion. 
and that was SCU with Frankie Kazarian and, of course, Scorpio Sky. And that title reign didn't last that long. And what have you really done with Scorpio Sky since? Right? One of your four women's champions was black, Nyla Rose. Also happens to be trans. So another form of representation there. Um, but everything was poised in position for her to be the first champion until you made Rio the first champion. And then when you did make Nyla Rose a champion, it didn't hit or connect the same. And she also had the shortest reign. But is what it is. You can certainly say the company did better by the Japanese wrestlers like Ryo and Hikaru Shida, but just because they got long title reigns doesn't mean they were good long title reigns. There was all obviously absolutely a significant problem with their presentation. Like why make them champions and they're hardly ever fucking there. So it's not unique only to black wrestlers. What I'm saying is an endemic problem within wrestling and also AEW is that black wrestlers experience it more. And that's just the reality. Zero of the seven total TNT champions have been black. You have one white guy that's been a three-time champion, and we all know who that founder piece of crap is. Zero of your four world champions have been black. But I could make the argument that that's understandable when you look at the names. Like Jericho is the first champion, then Moxley, then Omega, then even Hangman Page. Like I could pick apart some of it, but at the end of the day, it is hard to necessarily beef with any of those four. But to those that will come back and say, well, who would you have had win the championships? That's not necessarily the damn point. You're missing the point. The point is the lack of opportunities made available. The poor presentation, the inequitable presentation and opportunities provided to black wrestlers compared to others. That's the point. Well, somebody shouldn't just win the belt because of their skin color. That is not what I'm fucking saying. You're trying to deflect by making it about that when it's totally not. Just because you choose to not understand the context, just because you choose to not want to understand the layers involved with this type of conversation, that is your problem, not mine. But again, I come back to where Big Swole was a little bit right in terms of the representation. Respectfully, I think she missed the mark. It is, she touched on a little bit with the Bianca Big E piece, but it's not just about the faces, it's about the way the faces are presented. It is about presentation, it is about opportunities. Like you think about this, a perfect example of what I'm talking about here. Jay Lethal, and you know, I talked about like, am I supposed to be excited about Jay Lethal coming to AEW or not because of some of the concerns in the past, what have you? Okay, but let's assume, just for argument's sake, Let's assume that the other stuff of the past was crap or found not to be true, all right? AEW thought he was safe enough to hire, so if he's safe enough to hire, then he should be safe enough to potentially push. Here's a former ROH world champion that all of your audience knows who the hell he is, even going back to his TNA days. He has enough cred. He has enough believability. He is a good enough goddamn talent that you bring him in and send him straight at Sammy Guevara who also was booked shittily as a TNT champion. If you want to say, well, part of the problem with this company is just shitty writing and booking 80% of the time. Yes, somewhat true. Doesn't take away some of the other things I'm talking about, but that is a part of the problem. Like it is just an endemic general problem for the company. It just gets worse when you talk about the black wrestlers specifically. But Jay Lethal doesn't win the title. And meanwhile, you've got Scorpio Sky, who you seem to be positioning for a shot at Sammy Guevara, and you're seeing promos, and you're building a story there, but all of a sudden, here comes the big fucking white knight, Homelander himself, the founder, Cody Rhodes, and on Christmas Day, he just shoehorns his ass right in there, wins the TNT Championship for a third time. So you can't give it to Jay Lethal, you just jump the line of Scorpio Sky just to give it back to Cody Rhodes. Now, yes, that's founder crap, that's EVP political play bullshit, that's a lot of things. But Cody Rhodes ain't pulling that shit off if he's black. You get my drift? And that is reality. And if you can't accept that, I don't know what else to tell you. But look at the difference in the way they're featured and presented. I'll give you another example. What is so fundamentally different between a Wardlow and a Powerhouse Hobbs? Honestly, what's the difference? I'm not here to say that Powerhouse Hobbs is better. I'm not here to say that Powerhouse Hobbs should be pushed more than Wardlow. 
What I am saying is Warlow got an opportunity that a powerhouse Hobbs could only dream of. Being in the background of Team Taz where you're playing second and third fucking fiddle to hook for Christ's sakes is not the same as being put in a prime spot where they're getting ready to launch you off as a singles guy after your feud with MJF, which we know is coming. That turn is coming. But when you look at them stylistically, physique-wise, presence-wise, incredibly damn similar, what's the difference? Presentation and opportunity provided for one and not quite the same for the other. What's so different with a Jungle Boy? versus a Ricky Starks. And some of you are going to say, neck injury. Is it really that serious of a neck injury? I mean, he says it's not. point I'm getting at here is, Ricky Starks gets a little bit of a push, but he don't get the fucking Jungle Boy treatment. Why does Jungle Boy get the treatment? Because his dad was Luke Perry. Not his fault, but reality. Because he's with the fucking Luchasaurus, who is awesome. Because they've got a cool gimmick, and a freaking theme song that people love. If you gave somebody like a Lee Johnson or even a Sean Dean similar type of packaging, presentation, opportunities, who says they couldn't do the same thing or better? Like you cannot look at a Jungle Boy and tell me what is so spectacular or goddamn awesome compared to any number of other white wrestlers, let alone black wrestlers on that freaking roster. Again, it is about packaging, presentation, and opportunities. For those that will talk about, well, look at a Darby Allen. Well, look if you got two years of push like a Darby Allen did. You got a sting associated with you like a Darby Allen did. What could other talents, white and black and Hispanic, Latin and the like, do with that? Maybe they could do even better. Maybe they could do even more. So it's not just a representation problem in terms of the numbers and the leadership at the top. It's a contributing factor, but that in and of itself is not the problem alone. It's not. You could have no black faces, no black leadership at the top of the company, and still do incredibly well in terms of your packaging, your presentation, and opportunities provided to your non-white wrestlers, specifically your black wrestlers. Right? You could, but it doesn't happen. The problem is, is people associate numbers in terms of the number of people and say, that's diversity, that's good enough. And that's not. That is one piece of a much larger puzzle. When you have leadership like Tony Khan pointing to it and saying, well, you know, I am a person of color, so it's the same. It's not the fucking same. It's just not. Stop that. And you certainly don't understand what it's like to live in America as a black man, and especially be a black man or a black woman trying to make it in the wrestling business. So fucking stop it. And if your source is Brandy Rhodes, then you need to be looking for different sources respectfully. Stop responding, Tony Khan, to every goddamn little critique or criticism that somebody offers you. And sometimes just shut your mouth and accept them. Put on your big boy pants and act like a leader that many of your fanboys allege you to be. The best response you could have had to this, honestly, was one, shut the fuck up and not say anything, but two, at least address it by saying, well, you know what? I'm going to take this and think about how we can be better. You could have said she was right. You could have thrown her a freaking bone. It's not like she buried you. Maybe that insecurity where that little bit gets you butt hurt. The problem is not Big Swole. The problem is you. To those fans that don't like that these types of things are brought up, well, you know, the reason they continue to get brought up is because of individuals like yourself who continue to deny basic reality and fail to choose to understand problems from a different perspective. And by you pushing against it, you make yourself at least somewhat complicit in the problems continuing to exacerbate themselves. That's what it is. It's not just that AEW doesn't have a long history of black champions. And even if you want to say, well, look at the tag champs now, the Lucha Brothers. Yeah, and even them, they're not black. They're obviously, you know, Hispanic, Latin, Mexican, whatever. Non-white. And how exactly are they featured? 
They're featured like shit. So they were given some type of opportunity, but certainly not given the same type of opportunity like the EVPs, the Young Bucks, were they? You can't possibly fucking say that. They ain't done shit with it. Because again, packaging, presentation, and opportunities with that presentation matter just as much, if not more so. And that, that is where AEW falls significantly short. For those that are going to bring up the WWE shit, well, at least WWE will actually push and put top titles and responsibility on some of their black wrestlers. Now, granted, once they do that, they fuck up their title reigns and then screw them up afterwards. Yes, that gets back to that trust factor that I talked about pre earlier in the video. But we, we're not even comparing. Like, you can talk about the history and all of that. But WWE also has a much larger history to draw off of, so they have a lot more boo-boos in the closet and a lot of bad things. And I've spent time, plenty of times over the years, talking about that shit on this channel. While AEW has a smaller sample size, that is true, so that could distort some of the things we talk about here. Ultimately, it is incumbent upon them to do better, and they absolutely can do better. Well, what black wrestlers do you think should have been world champion? When you're asking that question, you are missing the fucking point. The point is, is that when you have somebody that maybe could do well, just as well, if not better, with given the same type of opportunity of push of somebody like a Darby Allen, somebody like a Jungle Boy, they aren't given the opportunities. How can they get themselves into that position if they're not given the goddamn opportunities? Orange Cassidy. Was, I thought, a different, interesting character. I think he's shown way too much on TV now in matches, but that's neither here nor there. But a powerhouse Hobbs, instead of being built up like a monster, a powerhouse Hobbs is jobbing out multiple times to a freaking Orange Cassidy. Including, if you remember, one of them, wasn't he squashed immediately with the Superman punch? Another time, didn't Orange Cassidy have injured ribs and even then powerhouse Hobbs couldn't fucking beat him? And Orange Cassidy is basically a joke character. Like, what the fuck? If you can't see the problem there in terms of the presentation and the lack of opportunities provided, I don't know what to tell you. I don't. But sitting there getting mad at me doesn't change the reality. Like, wake up. Wake up. Because AEW can do better in their presentation and opportunities provided. No, but he's saying... That you should just put the strap on black wrestlers. That's fucking stupid. To those that might say to me, uh, white people shut up. Uh, who was it I saw? Like AJ Gray said that? Fucking ignorant ass. Shut the fuck up yourself. How fucking stupid is that? Don't generalize. Jackass. Which is fucking ignorant too. Because why in the hell would you not some want somebody... That could help articulate the point as well. Why would you not want somebody to provide a different perspective to potentially bring others along? That just makes no goddamn sense either. There's a lot of stupidity involved with this conversation, frankly. I'd like to see AEW do better. And instead of that criticism kind of being accepted and incorporated or at least considered, uh, butt hurt soy boy Tony, Tony Khan, you know, nepotistic, spoiled, entitled, rich brat, Tony Khan, did exactly what you would expect him to do. And that's ridiculous. And worst of all, his fans should expect command and demand better. But they're not. They would rather just see it continue to be all egg white wrestling.